Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is July the 25th, 2019, and what a great day on a red day. Miss Vegas? Yeah, you know what? What an amazing day today, like, on all fonts, like trading stocks, trading options. I mean, just everybody's just making money, and I'm thinking, I just can't keep up. There's just so much going on. Um, so good evening, everyone. So we're just going to talk about tonight, uh, Starbucks, SMSI, McDonald's, Twitter, uh, Nokia, and I definitely want to talk about, uh, bind beyond meats because this thing's just shocking the hell out of me. So let's get started. We're going to talk about Starbucks. So, you know, Starbucks right now after hours at 9609, very impressed with Starbucks. You know, they raised their full year forecast for earnings and revenue. They crushed the estimates for its third quarter earnings. The sales at the U.S. store opens um, at least a year grew by 7%, which was driven by 3% of traffic growth. And it's the second biggest market China saw, same store sales growth of 6%. So even though people are saying, you know, lucky, lucky, lucky coffee, um, you know, what, you know, Starbucks better be careful. You know, what? They're, whatever they're doing is still working. I mean, obviously... Um, you know, the, the cafes in both the U S and China have very pricey drinks. Um, also, you know, the coffee chain has a market value of $110.2 billion. And by the way, Starbucks is up 41% so far this year. That is just absolutely insane. I am just so impressed. So Jim, let's hear about this chart because wow, Starbucks, man, what a damn good coffee. Yeah, it's really a nice run after hours here. So we've got Starbucks sure going. Is. She ran to a high after hours of 97.15. Now that's an all-time year high. I think it's an all-time high. Let me pull up the three-year chart. I know it's an all-time high. This thing has had a great run since the since 6.25.18. So it's a whole year's run right here. This is a three-year chart. You can see the trend line as it runs up and how big this is. So we're going to pull up the 20 day and we're going to try to find some supports and reason we're going to try to find some supports we definitely broke out of the 52 week high so this 9172 is going to be a low 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 support going to probably going to be your first one if it decides to pull back but it just picks up more momentum more momentum and i think vegas not vegas has a target to 100 dollars, and i'm going to have to go ahead and believe that and this thing could probably run up above that more than 110 so I'm going to pull up the after hours right now and see if I can find, try to find some supports on this thing to where it wants to go pull back. We do have a pennant flag breakout right here. We do have a pennant flag. You see we have two engulfing candles. Then she started consolidating and pulled back to that nine and she rose above that nine and now just kind of bouncing between that nine and that 34 EMA. So I've got the second support maybe the third down here at 9340 then you got another support right here at 9530 and then you got another one right here and I'm just going to say this 9568 but I'm going to raise it up just a little bit 9574 the resistance we need to break is going to be up here around the $97 area we did hit 9715 after hours and I, Vegas was talking about earnings coming out I said yes this thing is going to just continue on up and going to have a big bounce after after we hear what the earnings are because I'm pretty confident in the trade. I'm definitely confident in the trade 100%. So we've got three different pullback areas. The first support is going to be right here at 95.74, 95.30, and then a big gap down to around 95.40. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and say low, low, low support. Anything below that's going to be a strong buy. You're willing to go ahead and stop this video at any time. Jot down these numbers. And, you know, I appreciate it if you did your own due diligence and kind of compromised and figure, okay, yeah, these sound like good to me. But these are just the pullback supports. And we definitely got a target to $100. And that's going to be Starbucks. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be... M We're going to talk about SMSI. So SMSI, this is yes. This is called Smith Micro. And uh, you know what? This company's out in Pittsburgh. And uh, you know what? They had their earnings result. And I mean, if Jim can show you there on his, uh, your message there on Discord, Jim. Yeah. Um, I can show you that I did alert this trade today in the room. 
And I did alert it as a swing trade. I did said, I told everyone just be a little cautious. There's earnings today as well. Um, new 52 week high. I did say that I was going to hold into earnings only because I have after hours access. And obviously if I could see that it wasn't going the right way, I would have certainly got out. Um, so I was, you know, warning the, the room. But at the same time, I have to say the fundamentals were aligned. Um, and one of the things, you know, this company, they're very into the mobile wireless solutions. They're into the Internet of Things. They do so many different products. Um, you can check out their website, smithmicro.com. But this is why it's ripping here after hours. I mean, look at that move. I mean, right now it's at 428. And I did give this one at 346. I mean, that's pretty damn good. And uh, very pleased to see this move. Now, this company here, what's really impressive is that they did report earnings revenue of $19.3 million uh, for the six month ending June 30th. This is a comparison to $12.4 million the same time last year. So this is fantastic to see that this company's gross profit uh, as a percentage of revenue was 90% for the six month ending June 30th compared to 81% last year. So this is fantastic. Um, I'm really pleased. And also, this is what's also important to know, especially if you're thinking, oh, you know, are you interested to hold this long term? And they, they also raised the guidance here as well. So what's really important is this part, the total cash and cash equivalents as of June 30th, which is, you know, not that long ago, is actually $6.6 .6 million. So the company is in great financial shape. Um, it's obviously reflecting in their performance and uh, they've done a fantastic job. So uh, I'm very pleased to see this great run as an overnight trade, a little bit risky going into earnings because you just never know. But I will say that uh, this had my eyes on it because the weekly was just telling me another story. And uh, definitely their outlook is very strong. They had a very successful launch with their safe path internet of thing device and it's definitely strengthened their market so that's why they're doing very well so i believe that we can see this definitely go over five dollars and i believe when this goes over five dollars there's going to be some interest from the institutions as well so jim let's hear about the chart on smsi please yes so we had to have a resistance breakout net form today in a channel of 336 as you can see, and then the, had a, the high of the resistance we had, had to break was the 350 area. And so we, we're much higher after hours on this now. It did bounce off at 350. So that's what we're going to call as a new support on this thing, on this stock. This is a yearly daily. And what I'm posting right now is called a TTM squeeze chart along with my moving averages of the 9, the 34, and the 200. We're entering on a daily yearly yearly daily squeeze right now on the TTM and that started here today so we're going to pull this up now to the 20 day and we're just going to have a look at the 20 day she did start breaking out from a resistance level at 316 and that's where the the 200 EMA is right now at the 316 level after hours we hit a high of 450 we do have a couple supports that drop down below it that's the 425 and the 391 so the resistance like I said this is a all-time year high on this stock and we're going to pull up the three-year and see if I can see anything different here we're definitely past the three-year high so that 450 is what we're going to have to break pullback supports anything above that we'll take it probably in 25 cent increments maybe a, a target of five dollars on this trade right now but I personally am going to look at it maybe for a small pullback. And let me pull this up to the daily one minute. We've got different areas in this channel here from 391 to 425. I think we, right after hours now we're at 420. So anywhere in this is going to be your first little support area. And it's going to be right around the 410 area. Your second one's going to be right around here around the 4 bucks. So I'm going to put this 413, 410 area right in here for your first support. Second one's going to be at four bucks, and your third one's going to be down here. I don't want to see it go any lower than 391. The resistance we need to break is going to be the 450, and we're going to take that in 25 cent increments on the way up if she decides to run. 
And I always play these moving averages too on a daily one minute. They could also become supports come tomorrow when we're looking at the stock. So this is SMSI, and it was a good call, Miss Vegas, you did on this trade this morning. If they'd have got in the trade, like you said, at 350, 360 area, 336, they would have made almost a dollar, a dollar bounce on that. Could have sold this after hours and made a dollar profit on that period. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be my favorite place, McDonald's. Oh, yes. Well, you know what? I'm only bringing this up because uh, I will say that I noticed a huge block trades today and a huge volume surge right at 4 o'clock. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you're just looking at the stock and uh, you're taking a look at the chart. But, you know, I'm going to show this to Jim here just for one sec to yeah. show you guys what stands out for me here. So if you actually look at this chart, I'm just going to send it to you, Jim. Yep. It's a very simple chart. I don't put on it. There's no lines in here. Just I'm just trying to keep the, I just want to keep this very simple. But if you see the whole day, you'll see the whole day, very little buying of McDonald's, a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, trickling here, trickling there. But, you know, it kept going higher, higher, higher. But if you notice right at four o'clock, just before the bell, boom, huge order came in. Okay. So. Why is this order going in so late in the day? And um, obviously we have earnings tomorrow morning. So we shall see what McDonald's is going to do. Now, I'm actually going to say anticipate. Uh, and again, I could be wrong. And I'm happy to admit if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, you know, I'm going to anticipate actually good earnings on McDonald's. You know, they have the footprint in the market. They're now with DoorDash. Uh, they're signing, they're, you know, leaving Uber Eats. Um, the stock looks bullish to me. It's had new 52-week highs. This thing definitely to me is actually even overbought. Um, so I'd like to hear what Jim what Jim sees here because we'll hear tomorrow morning pre-market McDonald's results, and you know we'll hear about the earnings. But I want to help know about their guidance, and I think that's going to be really important for us to to hear. So um, you know I like McDonald's long term. I like what they're doing. I like all these apps they got going on. Um, you know, they're now partnered with DoorDash. They got more footprints out there. So let's hear Jim McDonald's, please. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I, cleaned, I cleaned this chart up. I had to take everything off of it because her and I have been very bullish on this stock for a good six months or, or longer. It's been in the six-month trend line, as you can tell, that I drew upward, this upward channel. And if it pulls back, it's going to pull back to that lower channel part. It's going to stay in the channel. I doubt very seriously if it'll pull back to that bottom line. There's a little pivot point right in the middle of it, and that's going to say that's probably going to be right around in this 209 area. So that's going to be a very low support just in case it pulls back. With a high resistance of up here at 1823, that's going to be our long target for this trade. And I don't. I can see this thing going to 220 also because we're very bullish on this. I'm just really excited about the new management and and just all the new eats they have in here and the great coffee. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. We're going to look at the 20 day real fast and see if it tells us a little story. We've kind of hit a, a a head and shoulders up here, a high up here on the top of that trend line. That trend line runs right around the 217 high area for a year. After hours. We're at 215.25. I got a long target on this stock right now, probably right around the 218 area. I do have a 218.23 high, but I'm going to round that off to 18. Pullback supports. We got two supports in here that I'm really, really liking, and then we got one maybe a lower support right down here, right around, and I'm going to put that right there, 212.25 right there where that 200 EMA is on the 20 day, one hour chart. Now we've got the 9 crossing up over the 34, which is going to get bullish. I have, do believe this stock will run up tomorrow. It's kind of had a five-day sell-off with some pretty good little bounces, keeping a good little trend right here. But I think, didn't you say earnings tomorrow on this morning? It's tomorrow morning, yeah. Yeah, so when these earnings pop out on this stock, guarantee this thing's going to bounce up. And I'm going to have a long target on this thing for 218 jot that down on notebook paper and see if we don't hit it but then I'm gonna pull this just up here on on a daily one minute and see if I miss anything at all 
Yeah, I could add another support to this. We are up after hours, 1525, so it's already starting its wedge up. We did have a low today down here right around the uh, oh, 21238. And I don't say if we see that, it's going to pull back to the 212.25. And I'm going to put I'm going to put a second support level, or maybe the third second support level here, and the first one right here. If she decides to pull back any at all, and oh gosh, I got to put this in here too. See, we had the high yesterday at 214.94, and she pulled all the way back to 212.27, and then she's bounced up to right around the pivot point area right here so this is the way we're going to call it first support 214.94 second support 214.55 third support is going to be right in this channel right in here between 214 and 214.10 somewhere in that area if it pulls back I think it could and it, if it does I bet you a hundred dollars that that thing should stop right there if not She'll go ahead and start taking off when that earnings come out, and we'll have a target to 218. And that's going to be McDonald's. The next one we're going to talk about that I really enjoy. We have a lot of good trader friends out there. We also have, let me show you something real fast on this. Let me show you something real fast on this. We have an I Love Stocks Twitter page. Please follow us if you do have a Twitter account. Hit that follow button. And Miss Vegas posts great alerts throughout the day. She posts her options calls. She's, I mean, she's really someone that I do admire when it comes to trading. And she's taught me a lot. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Twitter. Okay, so I got to tell you, like, I had no idea. Like, I love, um, I'm not saying I'm loving Twitter because, you know, I, I, did a, I did have an account years ago and then I stopped using it. I thought it was really good, but then... In terms of like trading stocks, I have to say to me, uh, till this day, stock twits is like my go-to and I love stock twits way better than Twitter with regards to stocks. Um, and they'll do, we're gonna do a video, we're working on one uh, about all about stock twits. And I kind of wanna explain why I love it, but I'm not gonna do that today because this is not what it's about. But I do wanna say this, I woke up today and I went onto Twitter and I'm like, what the heck? Uh, Twitter changed its layout and I'm like, what are they doing? So here's the scoop on it. Basically what happened is they have not redone their look and feel of the website and of their platform for over seven years. So seven years is a long time. And I guess they figured that it was time to give it a little bit of a like facelift. And, um, you know, I guess they had to basically look at ways that users interact with the site. And, you know, why are we making all these changes when people are so used to the way it is? But, you know, what they did was they updated the desktop for Twitter. It's now more in line with the mobile version of Twitter. So if you actually spend a lot of time on your phone, checking your notifications, navigating the desktop will totally be a breeze. Um, the redesign really came from them wanting to rebuild Twitter.com from the ground up. Also, what they want to do is to better fit for the future of where they want Twitter to be. They want it to be like faster, more personalized, and a lot more consistent with how they use Twitter, how we use Twitter. They don't want people to have to relearn how to reuse it. And that's why they didn't do any like crazy, crazy changes. There's so many new features, by the way, to, um, to check out. Um, they definitely have, um, I guess you can make some new colors. You'll be able to to jump between the different tabs. Um, you'll be able to switch between accounts from the side navigation. So if you are a celebrity, um, you could go from your celeb account and switch to another account. So there's just many new things out there. You can also change the layout of Twitter with the dark mode theme, which is a new feature they rolled out. And they actually named this theme dim and lights. So you dim for dark and lights for lights out. Um, so basically, if you're lying in bed and you don't want it so dark to trying to fall asleep, you can make it actually to have a darker background. So these are really interesting, comprehensive changes. Um, again, it's just a rebuild. They've reset the foundation to just provide features that people need um, so that they can have a better experience using Twitter. And this is what it's all about. So I'm just mentioning these changes. I haven't even tried checking them out 
um, just haven't had time when I noticed it today. Apparently, this was rolled out like July 15. They started rolling this out. But hey, listen, I just noticed it today. And I'm like, how come it's so different? Um, so anyhow, the reason I bring this up too is Twitter has earnings tomorrow morning, just like McDonald's. So Jim, I want to hear about Twitter. I do want to mention one thing too about Twitter is that they did have an upgrade, I believe, uh, the other day. And I will tell you where it was from. The definitely price target was raised to $40 from the Deutsche Bank. And also um, on Twitter, um, they also had, a, I did see a lot of um, calls, by the way, for January 2020, $49 calls. I noticed those at the beginning of the month. And these are January 17 calls. Um, they were uh, $1.10 at the time. Um, so I don't know. We'll see, Jim. What are your thoughts on Twitter? Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of analysts also were making this a buy. Yeah. So yeah. let's see. What do you think of Twitter? I'm I'm 100% bullish on this thing. It's going to bounce tomorrow. We're going to hit our $40 right. target. One thing that I did read right here is is that the Twitter stock options are ready for a 10% post earnings move on Friday. Okay. And, and also, well, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say those option calls, like the ones that were a $49 strike for um, the January 2020s, those were a dollar and 10 cents a couple weeks ago. We did mention them in the room um, because there was a lot of open interest and a lot of volume going on yep. in those particular calls. And that was thanks to the team at Trade Exchange alerting us on the unusual volume. And those were $1.10 back then. We're talking back on July 2nd is when we looked at that. And those option calls today are now going for, on the ask, one sixty four. The high of day was $1.75. So, I mean, already those option calls are up $65 each in just a matter of, like, three weeks. Like, that's a crazy move. That's amazing. Yeah. Plus, uh, we closed here at 38.12, and right now, after hours, we're at 38.74. So I'm definitely going to see the resistance break here tomorrow. Um, we're going to get up here to the to the morning high. We're going to have a double top, 39.32. That's where I'm going to put this trend line right here. I already have one here at 39.36 from before. We'll just leave it right at that, 39.36. So let's do one little thing right here. Let's go back in history. As you go back in history, we did have a high up here right around... 4087 so believe you me we will see forty dollars tomorrow we'll see it break that 3932 high that we had today and i've got some more highs up here if it does break past that 40 i've got a 4067 a 4115 and i'm just using these off my old extended trend lines that i've used over and over again that i have definitely more or less mastered in time with a 42.42 and a 43.04, I'm very bullish on the American market. I'm, you know, I, I don't listen to these analysts that cut us down and put us down and say, we're, we're, you know, this is an American market and I'm very bullish on it. I don't think the world recession will hurt us that much at all. If, if, we, and we're in one, we've been in one for years. It's just now they're, they're talking about it. So yeah, we've got a resistance here past 40. I mean, 4016, 4067, 4115 on up. And you're willing to stop these videos at any time. The pullback supports on this trade, if it pulls back any at all, could be down here at that $38 area, $38.55. And I got to find something in here in between. And I'm going to say $38.34 with a resistance at there we are already there 3880 after hours i'm going to show you the tape while we're doing this look at all that green tape people are buying into this they know that earnings will be good tomorrow and i think what i told vegas today i think membership will be up that's going to be the catalyst to bring it's not going to be as much as the earnings it's going to be about the memberships we're going to have a resistance up here at 3916 and another one right here at 3906. So the next three resistances, the one we need to break is going to be 3936, 
the second resistance 3916 and the first one at 3906 with the three supports we're at a pivot point at 3880 and the three supports are going to be 3855 3834 and then 3804 and it's going to be Twitter I got a $40 target on this tomorrow or more and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be in okay Okay, so huh, no pun intended on N O K. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is, um, you know, first in the morning I thought Nog, and I'm like, Nog, the oil. And I'm thinking, no, it's Nokia when the scanner was talking about this one. I got to tell you, at first I was so confused. I'm like, why is Nokia going like the tape, the volume was just so crazy. And I was like, something must have happened here. So, you know what? I it was, I didn't notice right away. Uh, cause there's just so much action going on in the morning, you know, and you're trying to like think clearly, but obviously Nokia reported a solid second quarter result on the back of the 5G demand, which is a competitive end to end portfolio. They also improved their operational strategy execution and the bottom and top lines definitely beat the consensus estimate. Um, Okay, sorry. So the improvement was driven by the um, obviously consensus estimates, and um, obviously it, the results were well received by the market. We could see that there was tons of buying going on today. I mean, if you actually look at the volume on Nokia today in particular, I mean, it's totally, totally insane. Um, but, you know, we actually, I wasn't such a big fan of, let's say, buying the stock because I have traded this before. And I was just finding that trading the stock sometimes so slow um, to move. And, I mean, you could see that. I mean, even though the volume's there, like over 92.40 million shares, I mean, the stock went as low as 551 and went as high as 577. I mean, it's not even 20, a little over, I guess, 20 cents. So that's actually a good move. But still, to me, it's not a huge momentum move. Um, but I will say we did look at it from the option side. We did pick up this morning very early the uh, calls for Nokia, the $5.50 calls. And we actually alerted both the trade to, to, tra to day trade the stock and also to people that don't want to day trade stocks, they want to do options, uh, did alert the $5.50 calls that expire tomorrow. Those were going for 11 cents went up over 100 uh, percent closing at around 24 cents per contract so again 14 dollar gain on a contract's great and uh, congratulations to everyone so uh, i'm happy about that and uh, jim let's hear about this nokia because i gotta tell you the block trades just don't stop there's all day yep the way this market's been running i don't i wouldn't doubt it if it runs up more but today was a very good run on this trade for what I've seen throughout history. Mm -hmm. We did have a breakout that started here at 521 and about three quarters into the day, she hit a top of 577 with a little descending pattern, started disrespecting the nine and the 34 and dipped down below the 200 right here at the end of day. But I see the nine curling up a little bit. So we're gonna pull up the year's chart on this and get a fast look at this. You see, we still have a lot more, there's a big gap let me say it again. This was a big gap on this trade today. And we did kind of clear a section in here that was vitally important. And that was right here between the price of 536 and 564. Right now we're at 567 after hours with a high of 580 pretty much. And we are in kind of, did have a pretty nasty sell off down here. I don't know what that was all about, but she did create a little channel here on sideway pattern. And then started breaking out here in the past couple of weeks. And then we had the big bounce today. So this is an unusual stock pattern to me. I think we're going to probably build some strength in this little channel right in here. I hate to see it go any lower than the 548 that can. We're going to pull up the 20 day. The 20 day can tell me a little bit more. We got a low support right here at 522. We've got another support right here at 552 to 548. So I'm going to be using my three moving averages, the 9, the 34, and the 200 tomorrow to try to find support on this trade. 
I hate to see it go any lower than this 552. It probably will if it can. Did have an ascending breakout here. Well, I can't draw it up, but you can see the ascending breakout we had pre-market. And then she went ahead and bounced up, created a little resistance here at 560. And then throughout the day, we had a big, big engulfing candle on this one hour chart daily. I mean, 20 day. So we're going to pull up the 21 day, one minute. This really can tell the story that I want to see. I don't want to see it go any lower than the 552. I'm not saying it can't, but that's a solid support. And we're going to have to watch these moving averages and see how they turn tomorrow. If I can see the 9 above the 34 and the 34 above the 200, we'll go ahead and try to break resistance at 577 and have a double top for new highs. And to do that, we're going to look at the 20 day one more time. We're going to look at the 3 month. And i got to try to find a resistance level. So the next target, if we can break that 580, 577, is going to be up here around the 590 area. But what I personally want to see is this building a channel in this gap. I hate to see it go into that gap right there. If it does, we got a support level at 536. That's going to be your solid low support. I'll turn that into a red line. 536. I'll hit that OK button. No lower than that. First support's going to be right in here, right around, I'd say probably your second support. It's going to be right here, right around 552, 557, with that first one right here at 564. But I actually see it pulling back to the 552. I'm kind of confused with this chart, so we're just going to have to see how it reacts tomorrow. I wouldn't be chasing the trade at all, and that's going to be in OK. And the last one is a really beautiful call today. I mean, this is just surprise to all the shorts they're still talking about it they just say it's crazy I think it's another chip Olay and that's going to be B Y N D well you know what Jim look at those options the flow of the options there I sent you just now so I mean there was a lot of money flowing into these options today I mean these are not ones I mean if you notice there's quite a few expiring tomorrow a big chunk a lot of money going into option calls for um, BYND today, uh, all expiring tomorrow. And uh, they bought them today, expiring tomorrow. So you know what? That's not a lot of spare change going in there. And there's a huge one at the one at the very top for August 16. Um, this one's already bought something in the money, but look at that that 2.3 million dollar mm. premium. That is something, something else. But uh, yeah, you know, like Beyond Meat, totally uh, shocking many people. Um, and you know what? I'm never going to live this down from my dad because he's always telling me about, you remember I told you about that stock, uh, Beyond Meat? I told you and you told me not that you're not going to get it because IPOs don't always run. Um, so I know, I know, I know, Dad, if you're listening, I know. Uh, this could have been like a huge, huge win. Uh, but, you know, I got to tell you, you know, there, there is a lot of chatter going on. I mean, ever since the company went public back in May, all it has done is win. And it's keep, you know, they have an article here that it keeps winning in a big way. You know, the company has released like new premium price products. They have uh, a spicy sausage. They have a ground beef burger blend. Um, apparently, uh, very much in demand by the consumer. Uh, the products are showing up in retailers that are basically, you know, like Whole Foods and uh, also what, maybe Target. Um, I actually saw some of the products in uh, Metro down in Toronto. Um, so I saw it there. And you know what? Um, the CEO and founder, Ethan Brown, was telling uh, Yahoo Finance that the plant-based bacon and steaks are on the way. So guess what? They have more products coming out. So bacon and steak, plant-based ones. So if that's not enough to get you interested in the company, you're, uh, they just announced yesterday that they made a deal with Dunkin' Donuts, which is called the Dunkin' Brands, and they're going to have a special sausage patty, and it's going to be uh, circulated to 190 locations of Dunkin' Donuts in Manhattan, and both CEOs of both Beyond Meat and Dunkin' Brands, uh, they said that the rollout is likely soon. 
they so it hasn't come out yet it's going to be soon um so what's going to happen here is uh dunkin donuts don't just so you know has 1200 us stores and they actually have more fast food tie-ups uh on the way and beyond and beyond meats is definitely going to be shocking wall street i think sooner than expected um they said that by the way the company you know hasn't really turned a profit yet um but you know they have a 12.8 uh, billion dollar market cap um so they're on a great path definitely and right now beyond meets guidance calls uh we'll see what happens with what's going on but uh, you know earnings on this one just so you know is monday and uh, my goodness i have no idea what to expect tomorrow because today when this was popping all over the place and it's very stressful to trade the stock if you are in the stock even in the option because you go from one minute you're going from like a five dollar dip five dollar rip so you're constantly feeling like you're on a roller coaster ride with the stock i really think it's very scary to actually short this and the, i know people were looking to short this and we're shorting it and i'm telling you they really got hammered on this today because this even after hours as i'm speaking is at 227.29 and i think jim said it was a little higher earlier but still this is a crazy 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 run jim this is beyond me well let me hear what you're going to say about beyond me the first thing i want to say is i like this stock because i'm very in environmentally friendly company the second thing i want to mention is now in over 33,000 grocery stores restaurants hotels universities and beyond so they just keep growing and growing and growing. Now, this was the beautiful play today. I'm telling you, I'm going to show you three different times that you could have got in this trade if you missed it the first time. So we're going to pull up the chart. The early high was today was at, before close, was at 222.89. We closed at 222.86. Vegas and I had, she had a target of 220. Bam, we hit that 220 right on. I said, after that, I said, you know, I, I did a crazy call on this once before, and it ran from under 100 bucks all the way to 150 And tomorrow, or here soon, I'm going to say we're going to go to 250 Now, there are going to be a lot of selling options on this tomorrow, so it is a Friday. So I think we'll probably consolidate some, maybe have that big breakout to 250 and pull right back. Now, this is what I want to show you on the daily chart today. This is going to be kind of a short little lesson. We're going to pull this up to the daily one minute. I'm going to magnify this up right here. Today, I notified three different times of breakouts. They're called ascending triangles. When you have a lower high and a neckline or a resistance line that you have the stock that wants to top it up and it finally sits. This is called an ascending triangle with lower highs. I called every one of these breakouts. There's three of them today. And this last one really got me kind of, it was kind of a steeper high or low, and it was shorter. And I, said, I was telling Vegas, I said, we're going to break that 120, that 220, and she's going to bounce on up. And then the benefit about these necklines, and I want you to see, I want to see every one of these, I want you to see this. Here's an ascending triangle. We had the neckline, the resistance line right here. It broke out it pulled back to that resistance line. We had another ascending triangle. It broke out of that. It hit all the way up to a new high. It pulled back to that, ascend, that, 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 that top. We did it again. We had another breakout. It pulled back to that top. You had four different times to get in this trade. From the very beginning to the descending triangle breakout and sell it, pull it back, Get back on that resistance level again. Follow that trend all the way up. Hit the breakout. Pull back. You had four different channels where you could have took and scalped this four different times today. Now, I did learn something today. A guy was short in his stock. So every time it broke that resistance, it turned around and shorted for three bucks. So that could be the same pattern. When you see a pattern like this, it can be shortable, but you don't want to go too much on it. You don't want to say it's going to drop 20 bucks or something like that because you'll be you'll be having to cover your calls. We did have a resistance high up here, right around the 226. Let me look at this, I think it was higher than that. So let me uh, magnify this. But there's a short little lesson. Those are ascending triangles. 
Each one of them pulled back to that resistance line and bounced on up, had another breakout. Beautiful chart today. I mean, it, it don't make them more beautiful ever than this. We did have an after hours high of 234.17. That's what we got to break. But I'm going to magnify this up and see if I can get a little bit tighter with it. And I can't get much tighter with it. 233.94 is going to be my resistance. Support level. Right here, another resistance at 229.83. And then here we go again. We had that breakout. I want to show you something else here. I'm going to draw a trend line from this consolidated period. After that breakout, it pulled back and hit that 34. Run up, and look at this. It pulled right back to that consolidated area here after hours. And then she bounced on up. I mean, every chart tells a story. And once you start reading charts, your, and patterns, your trading will improve 100%. So we're going to call a support level right down here at 222. You see where we had the double top? That's where you want to draw your trend line. Low support is going to be the last neckline, the last resistance we broke. It's at 219.85. If it pulls back, that's going to be a solid support. That's going to be your third one. Your second one's going to be at 222.20. Your first one's going to be right here, going to be at 225.45. Your resistance to break is going to be 229.83, 234.17. And let's see if we hit that magic number tomorrow at 250. If it breaks past this 233.94, get your finger on the mouse and get ready to take that profit. This is going to be BYND, and that concludes the market report. i deeply appreciate it if you would hit the... Uh, subscribe button and ring that bell for future updates and follow us on Twitter. And Miss Vegas, you have a lot more to say? No, you know what? I just want to wish everyone a great night. I really appreciate everyone subscribing, liking, following, and obviously for even taking the time to come visit the room. Even if you just come for a trial, that's fine. If you don't join after, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, we're not salespeople. Um, we're here to actually help people. And uh, obviously your experience here should actually make you know if you want to be part of the group or not um you know so it really is based on your own experience you know it has to be good for you um and that's that bottom line is you are number one so um we genuinely care about everyone we really want to help people and that was the mission of what we're doing and i think we're doing actually a really good job um because i'm getting so many beautiful messages which i'd love to share one day uh, and i'll probably share some maybe on the weekend um, just some of them just seriously have touched my heart and I'm just like, I just like, sometimes I just like want to cry reading them, but they're just like so amazing. And then I, I really don't even solicit the information. I just say sometimes, how's your trading going? And then they send me the like, beautiful notes and I was just like, my goodness, like, oh, I just want to cry. So anyhow, so I wish everyone a great night. Thank you so much again for myself and from Jim. Uh, you're welcome to come by. And you know what? I think Jim and I are going to plan um, maybe sometime next week. I think we're going to do a live episode of um, I Love Stocks. We're going to broadcast live on YouTube and you'll be able to tune in and you can listen to us there. And uh, we'll, we'll let you know the date for that, but we will be planning that. So stay tuned for that information and have a great night, everyone. And we won't do a report tomorrow because it's Friday, but follow on social media. We share a lot of stuff in real time. And uh, we'll definitely do a report on the weekend. So have a great night, everyone, and thanks a lot for your support. Well, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's July the 25th, 2019. Don't forget about McDonald's and Twitter earnings in the morning. They're definitely going to be two bullish stocks that you'll be wanting to get in that early options play or maybe a scalp play. And that's about all i got to say. We love stocks. Thank you.